everybody, I'm Carrie Fairneck. This is NBAA TV Live. We're excited that you're with us online. I have a really exciting guest right now. I'm joined now by Major General Jeannie Levitt. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. I know you have the distinction of being the first female fighter pilot, right? For the Air Force. For the yes, Air Force. Yeah, so tell us what that's like. I know you spoke about it this morning. Tell us a little bit about, about that role for you now. Well, it wasn't anything I wanted, uh -huh. timing-wise. I did not want to be the first. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be the best. Interesting. So my timing ended up such that I was the first female fighter pilot for the Air Force. And being the first, does that give you more opportunities to go out and speak about about you, about your background, about how to get more women involved in it? I assume that's kind of giving you a little bit of an opportunity there. Well, there was a lot of attention, and it mm -hmm. wasn't attention I wanted, but it oh, came with my timing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I actually avoided it for a little while, but then I realized the fact that my story could inspire others. And so more recently, I've been out talking more, uh, engaging, and trying to inspire this next generation. And I know you gave the keynote here at Base 19, right, which is really exciting. Tell me a little bit about where your passion for aviation came from. I am the unlikely pilot. Uh -huh. And so my first flight of any type was in a commercial airplane at age 18. 18 years old. Right after I graduated from high school. No kidding. I'll be darned. That's so interesting. That is an unlikely pilot. It is. My my mother was terrified of flying. Uh huh. Uh, so we never flew anywhere, and we just took other modes of transportation. Wow. And so I had begged so many years that after graduation from high school, she put mm -hmm. me on a plane by myself to go visit my uncle in the next couple states over. But she still didn't go with you. Oh no, absolutely not. <laughs> Did you ever get her on an airplane? She... It took a while. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I so it was only when uh, we were pregnant with our first child, uh, okay. she flew to, to see our daughter born. No kidding. And so what was it about that first flight when you were 18 that kind of made you think, all right, I could do this, this would be neat? I was fascinated by aviation. Mm -hmm. So I was studying aerospace engineering, and it wasn't until I crossed paths with a second lieutenant that was waiting for pilot training oh, wow. that I learned about the Air Force. Mm -hmm. So I was a couple years through college when I met this second lieutenant. Wow. and asked him a whole bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. And I was fascinated by the fact that the Air Force would pay to make you a pilot and then wow. pay for you to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went back to university. I was doing a work program that semester. Went back to university and um, joined ROTC, and that's, that's where my path started. That's amazing. And now I know you have a focus on diversity and inclusion and really making sure that the pilots represent as many different kinds of people as possible, right? Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, diversity is a big emphasis item for my leadership. So mm -hmm. my chief of staff of the Air Force, Gerald Goldfein, says it's a strategic imperative that we have a diverse force. And it's truly a competitive advantage sure. because if we have people that bring different perspectives and different viewpoints, we're going to get better solutions to the tough problems when we face them. I, I think that's true in business. I think that's true in the military. I think it's true in nonprofits, right? you got to have a Absolutely. lot of different voices at the table. That's really what it's all about. You want that diversity of thought to bring those different perspectives mm -hmm. and, and see viewpoints that you can't see on your own. And it's exciting to see MBAA focusing on that as well, right? It is. I know we talked a little bit too about different opportunities in the Air Force. It's not always about full time wearing the uniform all the time, right? Tell me about that. And not everyone flies, right, you know. Right. So I came in because I loved aviation and I loved, wanted to be a pilot, but I stayed because I loved the mission mm -hmm. and I loved the people. Uh, so now I'm in charge of recruiting. And we, our mission statement is to inspire, engage, and recruit the next generation of airmen. But one of the big changes we're doing is we're trying to recruit more holistically to the United States Air Force with many ways to serve. So it can be full or part-time, it can be in or out of uniform. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just active duty, it can be in the Air Force uh, Reserves, you can be in the Air National Guard, uh, you can be an officer, you can be enlisted, you could be a civilian. We have mm -hmm. Air Force civilians. And so a lot of people don't realize that there's many ways to serve in the Air Force. I was going to say, I know I didn't until we were talking before this interview. I didn't realize that it could be a part-time out of uniform, for example, that there's so many different kinds of opportunities. And it seems like that, really pushing that message, is going to help bring in new, new blood, if you will, and, and the younger generation, right? And it's that engagement piece, because so many people are not familiar with the military because they don't know someone in the military. Mm -hmm. And through engagement, we can counter any incorrect misperceptions or stereotypes with facts and reality. Right. I know you've been walking the show floor a little bit. Anything really exciting catch your eye or where you think we're headed in the future? 
This has been amazing. I've had just a little bit of time to wander around. Mm -hmm. They kept someone with me so I didn't get lost because <laughs> I don't think I would have made it to the keynote on time. <laughs> There's too much to look at. There right? is so much to look at. And we right. even brought our own display, the Air Force did, with virtual Fantastic. reality simulators that people can you know, see what it's like to be a pilot. That's amazing. So that can inspire a lot of people also. That is Thank the idea. Thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate you taking the time to come talk to us right here at NBA TV Live. Thank you.